Hello, I'm Brent Ferris, and in this video I want to go over how you can dynamically load JavaScript files. So if you're used to uh, the traditional way of loading in JavaScript files, you'll probably do like hello in the world, you'll, you'll have like a whole bunch of JavaScript files here and maybe down here. You'll have them all over the place. And this gets messy and hard to uh, kind of control, and then you'll wind up putting everything into one file. And uh, sometimes that you know when you go to production putting it all in one file is cool you can have an automation do that but when you're developing you want to make it simple where you can have multiple JavaScript files and then you can work with them separately so I have this uh, hello in world and basically um, this application here where let's get rid of that it says hello in the world uh, in a uh, in in uh, an alert box, so basically hello just alerts hello and world alerts uh, world, and I have this blank loader.js and this is where we're going to put our loader function. So let's open up loader and get rid of hello and world from here, and then our loader is going to take care of everything we need. So we're going to make function load and then file. Now a lot of people like to call this require, but require is like a it's it's something that's used in like Node.js and other things, so you probably don't want to use require. You can call it load or load.js or something. Um, so a file and basically all we have we're gonna do the traditional method where we're gonna dynamically build the script and then inject it into the DOM. So we're gonna do var scr uh, equals document create element script. Then we're going to do an scr.set attribute, and it is going to be uh, type text slash Java script. And we're going to do an scr.set attribute, and this attribute is going to be uh, src and the file that we're going to be loading in. Um, so if you recognize, this is just creating a script object like we have here. Uh, it's setting the type to text JavaScript and setting the SRC or the source to the file. And then we just need to inject it into our document. So document dot get elements by uh, tag name head and the first one append child and we're going to append the SRC. So now we can call this function load uh, JS slash uh, hello.js load js slash world.js so now it's going to load in both of those through this method so let's jump back over to this guy and oh we have an error what's my error reference src is not defined of course not why would it be uh, src oh I put scr on all these hey let's call it src that's funny Okay, uh, now let's go back. Now it loads up hello and world. So now it loads them both. Notice it said hello and then world. Uh, due to web browser specif specifications, um, it loads these scripts asynchronously and you can't really you can't really dictate which one comes first. So notice I refreshed and now it's saying hello and then world. So uh, this method is cool if you want to just inject stuff and you don't care when it pops in. Um, if you need to load hello first and then world, you probably want to create some kind of eval function. So I'll just quickly make one. Um, basically the concept is you do an HTTP request and you can look that up if you don't know what it is or I'll make another video for it. And you get the contents of your JavaScript files and you eval them. Uh, you do eval on them and eval is evil I know. Um, if you come up with a better method let me know but this is a way that you can get them to load in uh, in order um, without having to actually write explicit code within these files to dictate when to load the next one uh, you can chain them or do whatever you want but let's do uh, an eval so I have you know, let's just give it some space I have a whole bunch of code I've already written for doing the HTTP request so I'm just gonna put that up there and just use it so this is the way that is asynchronous now we're gonna make a synchronous method we're going to say js.http you're not gonna say this because you don't have this code up here uh, but use 
probably jQuery or whatever library that you're used to using for HTTP requests or just write an HTTP request. So I'm going to get uh, the file and there's going to be no get parameters and this is going to be a callback function. Now uh, I would suggest using promises. If you don't know what a promise is, um, just check it out. Basically you can say on complete or on failure or on success or next or pending whatever you can you can call you can have callbacks for whenever uh, certain behaviors are being invoked on your asynchronous request so I'm not going to go into promises now I might make a video for it so we're just going to go good old linear callback as part of the uh, arguments for the function so I'm going to call um, I'm going to I'm going to make an array of things that I'm going to call for this one uh, there are a million better ways to do this, so please don't go into the comments telling me what's a better way. I'm just trying to explain the premise. Um, so we'll, we'll make our uh, dependencies, if I can spell it right, I'm not even going to check the spelling on that. And we will have this dependency, and we will have our second dependency here. Come on, there we go. Okay, there's our two dependencies. And I'm going to call load and pass in our dependencies and we'll say files here so what we'll do is we'll call uh, the request on the first file and then we'll work off of the files after that so I'm just gonna make a simple var current is zero and I take current plop it in there Actually, what I'm going to do is, rather than using current, I'm just going to do zero, like I was going to do. And then in here, whenever we finish, uh, this is when the callback is done. First, I'm going to eval uh, the data. And the data is just a string of what's inside of the file. It's the file contents. So I'm going to eval that data. And then I'm going to say if uh, files.length is greater than one, we are going to do load and files dot slice uh, one. And if you don't know what files that slice does, it basically just cuts out the array. And I'm going to cut starting from one all the way to the end of the array and just pass it in. So basically, um, it's going to go through once. It's going to cut out this one, get the rest of the array, pass it in. And so eventually, we're just going to be left with just one file, and it's going to kill itself off. So. We'll load the dependencies and we will see that this happens in a linear order uh, every time we use it. So uh, I'll refresh. I have hello world. And if I refresh at any rate, it's always going to be in the correct order of hello and then world. So uh, there you go. That's a way that you can quickly clean up your file here to not have a billion JavaScript SRCs. Uh, and be able to just have one nice little loader. Again, like I said, if you've forgotten already, uh, you'll probably want to look into doing promise objects. Some browsers have them built in. There's tons of libraries for them. You can write your own. I'll show you a rudimentary bare bones basic one later and we'll probably, uh, then you can bring it into this one and use it, whichever you like. Um, so of course, if you have any suggestions uh, for any more videos that you'd like to know, uh, let me know. Um, and uh, it always seems like in JavaScript, particularly videos, I get people like coming in and saying, why don't you do it this way? Uh, just know that I'm not going to show like the, the most optimized, craziest method. I'm just going to show the, the thing that's on the top of, the, my, uh, top of my head. Uh, most of my videos are uh, off the cuff, and I don't pre-think about them. I just go ahead and write them. Uh, everything's live almost. Um, I don't have like this whole thing planned out. I just wing it. So of course there's going to be uh, things that aren't optimized. So thanks for watching um, and uh, have a good one.